it gets confused in all this. Is is Ukraine a, a, an ally? It, it, we're fighting this thing like they're they're they're. It's like we're fighting on the the to protect the southern border. Well, of course we wouldn't fight to protect the southern border, but. Every the, the way this thing is presented by Ignatius and Stavridis is that we've got to be in there. We've got to be sending air defense. We've got to give them missiles. We need we're 13 years behind in production. The, the secretary of the Navy is saying we don't have enough weapons in uh, in in Taiwan in the South China Sea right now. What what is the obsession, ma'am, with Ukraine among our ruling class? Well, it's a very good question, Steve, because it's an obsession that goes back uh, quite a long way. If you look at what happened in the wake of the Second World War, remember Putin at the beginning of this said, I am going to cleanse Ukraine of all the Nazis. And then there was a predictable outcry from most of the media saying, how can Putin say that? And and talk about all the uh, Jews in Ukraine who were murdered during the Second World War. And what everybody left out of that conversation was that many of the Nazis who murdered the Jews in Ukraine were Ukrainian. And they were Ukrainian Nazis. And after the Nazis came into Ukraine, they established the headquarters of the SS in uh, Ukraine itself. And so when you talk about neo-Nazis in Ukraine today, that's not even accurate because these aren't neo anything. These are the actual descendants of the Nazis of the Second World War. And who protected these people? Well, it was the head of the CIA, Alan Dulles, and people within the United States government. At the end of the Second World War, they protected them from the Nuremberg trials, and they brought many of them, as we now know from the declassified documents, Operation Paperclip, the FBI finders documents, many of these Nazis were uh, brought to the United States. Think about this, the bodies of the Jewish people who were murdered in the Holocaust, many of them were not buried. Many of them, they were barely cold. And we had already forgiven the mass murderers responsible. There's something wrong with that. And by the way, we hear nothing from the you're Jewish t- you're, community you're, 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 I just want to make sure, uh, you're, you're, talking about, you're, t- you're talking about Project Paperclip. This is the thing to get uh, scientists Operation and other people Paperclip. over a CIA. Yeah, and it, yeah. wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just scientists, right? We brought Nazis and we put them all across the United States government. We used someone who ran Nazi intelligence to be one of the key people that set up the CIA. We put Nazis in, leaders in significant and sensitive and classified areas of our government all across the United States government. And you tell me how that makes sense. We kept it secret from the American people. And then when it came out, there were no American leaders, no one in the Jewish community who had any issue with it. Nobody was raising uh, hell over this. And if you go back a little bit further, how about the fact that's left out of the conversation on Ukraine, which proves that Ukraine is, is not a country. I think most people don't realize that Ukraine is to Russia what Puerto Rico is to the United States. It's a protectorate. And so, uh, and it goes back centuries, right? It was in 1654 when Ukraine became a protectorate of Russia. And so if you look at it like that, it would help people understand that there are many people in Ukraine who speak Russian as a first language. There are many people in Ukraine who are loyal to Putin and to Moscow and to Russia and not to people in Kiev. And there are many people in Kiev and in the uh, in the uh, government in in Ukraine who have murdered and targeted uh, people in eastern Ukraine, particularly because the east is close to Russia and geographically, culturally, historically, that is the area that swears the, the highest degree of loyalty to Russia. And that is the area, of course, where you have Crimea, which voted under Obama. They voted for their independence from Ukraine. They wanted to be part of Russia. And of course, what did the American government say at the time? Oh, that's that's not a real election. They dismissed They dismissed it entirely and across Donbass and Lugansk and Odessa and all of these cities in eastern Ukraine, you have had thousands of people who have been murdered by the government in in, uh, Kiev and by their Nazi battalions like the Azov Battalion, which, by the way, with 5,000 strong is more of a division than a battalion. And the United States and NATO and all these countries have been sending their weapons. And they don't want you to look at this history. You know, I remember a time when every journalist I worked with, as we were heading into Afghanistan, as we're going into Iraq or, or wherever it was, you were loaded up with history books. You know, your job wasn't just to be a reporter and parrot out what the Pentagon told you or repeat what the White House was saying. Your job was to understand the context 
to understand the history, to talk to every Afghan you met, to uh, to evaluate what they said, you know, in terms of motive and to put that in a broader perspective. I used to tell the soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, the American soldiers, I said, look, I understand what you're saying and I'm listening to you, but you need to remember, I have a responsibility not just to you, I'm responsible to the, the, the people of this country country, because I need to look at what you're doing in this village in the context of the country as a whole. You provided 50 jobs, 200 jobs, but what has happened to unemployment across Iraq? How permanent are those jobs? And then I have a responsibility to the American people whose taxpayer dollars are funding this, who are paying your salary. I have a responsibility to the leaders who sent you there. You know, and so when you look at it, a journalist's job is to be true to the whole truth as much as you can. And what we are seeing today is that there is a complete abdication of responsibility from the media and from our leaders who are consistently dishonest. My name is Laura Logan, and I think everyone should use MyPillow.com if you care about this country. And if you like Mike Lindell, and if you want a good pillow. <laughs> and he's making all kinds of other things now, too. I know my, uh, my uncle wants uh, those slippers that you can wear outside, but I just think it's important to support people who are standing up for the right things. And when I see somebody attacked and uh, you know I see cancel culture at work, uh, I wanna fight against that. So that's why I like it. That's why I use it. If you care about what I do and I get people all over this country tell me all the time that they do, this is a great way to support me where you're getting something back and I'm getting to keep doing what I do. And it's not easy, as everybody knows. You know, if you want to sign up for the big lies, then, then go to the networks and, you know, and go all across the media. But you have to go independent if you want to hear the truth. If you want to support me, if you want to support this show, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code Lara, L-A-R-A, Lara, L-A-R-A. That's how you spell my name at checkout. That's MyPillow.com. Use promo code Lara at checkout. Thank you. Most people like me, I'm not an expert, right? And I don't pretend to be. And I, uh, but I hear from everybody, buy silver, buy gold, because the stock market is tanking, real estate is tanking. And, you know, we wanted to make sense of all of that. And the best person that I could find was Dr. Kirk Elliott. And not just uh, the best in his field, but a really good person. And that's important to me. Integrity matters. And so, um, you know, to, to make it more affordable for people, to give people an option to understand and the uh, ability to do something about it. Um, we turn to Dr. Kirk Elliott and, and I interview him every week and put that show out. It's to help people stay ahead of things and, and to give them um, some idea of how to make sense of the economic madness around us in this moment. He is more than happy to give a free consultation because he really does care about his clients and he is doing this for the right reasons and he does it himself, right? I mean, he, he's gotten rid of all his stocks and bonds and he's heavily invested in, in gold and silver and precious metals. So if you go on there, you can sign up for a free consultation. Use LaraLogan.gold. I know there's a number of steps. It can be a little time consuming as you work your way around, but it's worth it. If you're interested, then go to uh, the domain you're looking for is LaraLogan.gold.com. That's once again, it's lauraloganggold.com, and I spell my name L-A-R-A. -A. No you, for those of you wondering. So if you're driving in your car, let me repeat that one more time. It's lauraloganggold.com, and you spell that L-A-R-A. -A. America needs a reawakening because we've been deceived. These are popular events. People come from all over. And uh, there is an eclectic mix of speakers on the stage. Uh, I particularly am always interested to see what General Michael Flynn has to say because he is such a powerful voice in this country and I think such a uh, significant barometer where things are headed. But there's something uh, you know, that covers just about every subject you're concerned about and especially the things that matter most. Um, so I think uh, for a lot of people, you might think it's preaching to the choir, but you'd be surprised actually how much you learn. If you're interested in uh, attending one of these tours, go to timetofreeamerica.com. That's timetofreeamerica.com. And enter the competition there for a chance to win a backstage pass. If you come backstage, one thing I can promise you, because I've been there, you will meet all kinds of people. Everybody from Sheila Holm to Mel Kay to General Flynn to, of course, fabulous people like myself occasionally. And, um, and more than anything, you'll get an opportunity to speak to people up close because everybody who's there has one thing in common. They're very, very committed 
to what they're doing. So timetofreeamerica.com, go there, enter for a backstage pass and hope to see you at the next event.